Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and I want to offer my condolences to Diane's family, uh, to her colleagues from California, to the Speaker Emeritus, uh, to my colleague, Senator Padilla, and to so many of our friends and colleagues who are watching uh, today. I wanted to rise just because I'm one of the newer women in the United States Senate, and I wanted to acknowledge the difference that Diane Feinstein's example and work has made for me, for my constituents, for our daughters and our granddaughters. When I came to the Senate, the bipartisan women's dinners were long established. I didn't have to think about how I would get to know my women colleagues and share experiences and learn the ropes from them because Diane Feinstein and her other colleagues who were early pioneers in the Senate had already done some of that work for us. I didn't have to think about whether there was going to be a women's bathroom right off the floor that I could use just the way the men's bath, men use their bathroom in quick moments because Diane Feinstein and others had paved the way. I didn't think, have to think about whether I would be accepted in the same way that Diane Feinstein had to because she had already done that really difficult work of being that much better than everybody else to make sure that she never let women down and that she never let her constituents down. This morning, um, after Senator Murray called us and said we're all going to be on the floor, I was rushing to get ready. And uh, to Senator Murkowski's point, I put on different shoes than I was planning to. They were shoes that Diane had admired. She had the same pair. And uh, she told me they were good ones to wear. Um, I wore a scarf. It's not one Diane gave me, but because I thought Diane would think it would add a little something to my presence today. In the last few months of her service, Diane graced us with her dignity and with her friendship. She had a way of sitting down next to me in caucus lunch and checking in. She knew I had some particular caregiving challenges at home. And she would always say to me, who's with Ben right now? Ben is our son. Um, how are things with the family? I'm not sure people really understand that women still have family responsibilities that aren't easily transferable. She wanted me always to know that we had made a lot of progress, but that there was still progress to make. And in her way of nudging us and being an example for us, she was reminding us that we still have work to do, and she was counting on us to do it. The last meeting that my senior senator and I had with Diane about an issue that was really important to our state and we needed her vote on, she had been home in California recuperating, and she had just made it back to the Senate. And we went to meet with her in her hideaway. And I frankly didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how her health would be. She had a memo. It wasn't a short one. That laid out the entire issue that we were there to talk to her about. She went through that memo several places said, well, I read here that this is the case, and I read there that that is the case, and you both are telling me that you think I should vote in a particular way. We went back and forth about a couple of issues. We reinforced our arguments, our belief, and why she should vote to support our position. She asked us questions. She knew her stuff. She had read the memo, 
And she said, for a number of reasons, and she laid them out, that she would vote with us. She had muscle memory that pulled her up to her full height. She had the intellectual discipline and memory to understand how to cut to the chase and make sure she understood the essence of the issue we were dealing with. And she was reminding us of what you're supposed to do to serve your constituents, your state, and your country as the United States Senator. May her memory, Mr. President, be a blessing. I yield the floor.